it. Um, playing pretty good, um, talented, you know, got good big guys inside, um, got good guards. Obviously, Roberto Nelson's a very good player, so offensively, they're very good. Um, they have good size, good length. Um, they can disturb you defensively, so it's, you know, they got a very good team. Craig's doing a good job, and um, they're putting it together over there. Players, Dana didn't have you watch the film after the last one. Have you guys watched a little bit, though? What are you kind of seeing in terms of what, what went wrong there, and what do you got to do better this time? You know, we, we have watched the film. Um, I think there's a multiple of things that went wrong there. I think we fouled a little bit too much. I think they had 33 free throws in that game. So we put them on the line a little too much. Um, the big guys hurt us. and um, We just didn't convert. You know, we, we made some silly plays down the stretch. They took advantage of that. So I don't think there's necessarily one thing that hurt us in that game. I think it was multiple of things that hurt us. You know, we just got to overcome that and try to put a full 40 minutes together. Do you sense for both teams? I mean, it was a month ago. It seems different the second time around. Well, I think obviously with scouting teams, you get so familiar with teams that you know they try to do different things. Um, I think in a game like this, with both teams have had a week off, you might see some different things that they tried to add during the time off. But um, I think everybody's pretty familiar with each other at this point in time in conference play. Pachinski gets nine blocks against you guys. Do you sense your players are timid at all about driving to the hoop? You know, Lachinsky's got a lot of blocks against a lot of teams this year, so I wouldn't necessarily say that. I mean, he's a very good player. He's improved every year since he's been in Arizona State, and he's just a very good shot block. But does it make a presence inside? You know, does that put a thought in guys' minds? I'm sure it does, knowing that they got a guy in there that's able to block shots, and not when he's blocking them on awful shots as well. So I'm sure that puts a thought in guys' minds. Especially with Oregon State being pretty long, too. Who do you think is the best rim protector on that team? I think they got a couple. I think Brand's a very good rim protector. I think Moreland's a very good rim protector. They're good. Them guys are big. They're athletic. They're long. So I think they got a couple guys back there that do a good job protecting them. How do you guys combat that size and length? Because that's a uh, point where they probably have an advantage against you guys on paper. I think we have to use our quickness. Our guards have got to play very well. Um, and that's kind of our strength of our team is our guard play. And we got to use that against them to combat that with speed and quickness of the game and try to get the game going up and down, hopefully. Sounds like we're going to see a little bit more of the press. The guys said that worked pretty well against ASU. You see that becoming more of a weapon for you? You know, we're going to try it. You know, we've pressed you know, on and off this year. Um, it was effective against Arizona State, but, you know, we were down 21. We, you know, so we had to go to something different and try something different, and it was effective. Um, so, you know, we'll try different things. We have to do a good job just defensively and just try to put some stops together. Can you do press for 30 minutes, 35, or is that where these guys are? You know, I don't necessarily know if you can press for 30 to 35 minutes. Um, one thing that we do have, we got pretty good depth, so if mm -hmm. there's a team that could do it, we might possibly have that team. Um, I don't know if we'll just throw 30 to 35 minutes, but whatever we do, we want to be sound and do it very well. Coach, Johnny Lowe is one of the guys that's been here for a while now. Um, what kind of leadership role has he taken on, and what have you seen him uh, improve on and get better on in his four years here? You know, John's has been a great leader for us. He brings great energy. Every day he steps on the floor, um, he's a vocal leader, he has a great work ethic, and um, that's improved over the time he's been here. Obviously, he's been here four years now, so he was here from day one when we got here, and I've just been seeing maturity and his growth and being more vocal. You know, as a freshman, you don't really know what you're coming into, but he has some great guys to follow, and um, Garrett Sims, EJ Singer, that kind of showed him the way, and he kind of took that over. So, again, I mean, he's been a big part of what we've been doing, and um, you know, we're glad to have him be a part of our program. And obviously he's not the biggest guy and that's not ideal for a basketball player, but I guess what does this um, what does that say about him that he's been able to have so much success well, I, at five foot eight? Well I think he's got a big heart. Yeah. I mean, his work ethic is great and again regardless of the size, his heart is so big and his will and determination is kind of what gets him over. So again regardless of his size, he just works so hard and has such a great attitude that guys want to be around him. He's a great guy to coach. He's you know he's fun to be around. You want guys like that on your team, his personality. On the topic of the press, Dana said that Waverly and Elgin and Johnny had done a good job coming in and helping you guys with the energy. Is it just fresh legs, or was it something different that they brought? You know, I think it was a little something different. Um, obviously, with Waverly, I think it was a bigger body to go up against their big guys. So I think that gave him a different look. Um, he hadn't been playing a lot lately, so I'm sure he did have a little fresher legs. But uh, them guys just brought some energy off the bench. Um, Elgin Cook, we hadn't been getting a lot from him the last five or six games, and he came in and brought something to that game. Jonathan Lloyd, we pretty much knew we were going to get night in and night out of Jonathan Lloyd. He just came in and does, did what he does. How do you explain that dip in production from Elgin? I mean, he had looked so good so early. You know, I think you'll find a lot of times in first-year guys, guys come from junior college or high school sometimes, they will hit the ball. You know, this is a little bit longer of a season. 
different competition that you're playing against on a regular basis. Not, I don't necessarily want to say that you know, he got tired or he, he wore out, but it's just one of those things that happens. Um, he was in a little bit of a lull. He's a big part of what we're trying to do. Obviously, when we were having some success, he was playing very well, and we need to get him back playing like he was initially to start the season. So he's a big part of our team. His best skills seem like the raw ones, the hops and the energy, the length. But has he developed a jumper or kind of a, a weapon that he can go at guys without using just his raw physical skills? No, he's getting better. He's getting better. And again, Elgin is a guy that's got to bring high energy to our team. Um, he plays extremely hard. He's a very good athlete. So he brings some different things. He's a challenge to guard even when he's not shooting the ball well because he's kind of a mismatch problem for opposing teams. Like I said, he's getting better. He's working hard in practice. So we think we've got some big things to expect from him moving forward. Coach, you obviously have a lot of depth, but with each and every game moving forward being so important, are you considering tightening up the lineup a little bit moving forward at all? You know, we, we really haven't. I mean, it's just a matter of we, we're going to go what we think will help us win the games at this point in time. I mean, we got to take it game by game and not look past any team right now and um, just get ready for Oregon State. If that means we have to play eight guys to get the job done or play ten guys to get the job done, we're prepared to do what we got to do. So you don't believe that kind of uh, tarnishes the chemistry, I guess, that these guys build if you guys keep playing around the rotations? No, not necessarily. And again, if we're going to try to play the way we want to play and get up and down, you know, it's hard for guys to play that way and that style for, you know, 35 to 40 minutes. So we're going to be running guys in and out and just trying to get a rhythm. You notice an improvement in Waverly, uh, especially after not maybe maybe the lack of minutes in a couple games, maybe that helped them improve more energy? You know, I thought he bring, brought some, had, had a pretty good weekend last weekend. I thought he did decent against Arizona, um, against Arizona State. He brought some things to the table. He defended really well, rebounded the ball pretty good, and just brought a different energy. But again, his size, I think, helped him. And again, I think it's a matter of matchups against the guys that we were going against this past weekend. We needed a bigger body in there. And so that's kind of what he brought to the table. Has that been a result of him doing a lot better in practice, or is that something he just regained some confidence that he didn't get at the beginning of the season? I think it's a combination of both. I think he's been working extremely hard in practice. You know, he wasn't probably getting the minutes he thought he should be getting, or obviously that he wanted. And so he could have very easily gave up, but he came to practice, worked hard every day, and it paid off for him a little bit. As you look back on that the last Civil War offensively, do you see it as sort of an outlier or an anomaly that Joe and Dot and, and Mike all had pretty rough nights on the same night? You know, we, we, we've had a problem with that a little bit of getting the guys to play well all on the same night as of lately. Um, you know, Joe had a great game the other night offensively, and it was just a matter of us getting three or four guys all on the same pace, having a good game offensively on that given night. I think we're capable of that. I think we can beat anybody. But again, we've had a little bit of a problem with getting three or four guys to have great offensive nights on the same night. Is that just a case of bad timing, or is there something, a way you can kind of solve that? You know, if there's a way, I'd like to know. <laughs> but, you know, just in case of bad timing, you know, guys are struggling a little bit. But, again, we don't want that to reflect on our team. You're not going to make your shots every night you step out there. We just want the guys to continue to play hard, defend and rebound, and let the chips fall where they fall. So, again, we'll get all on the same page where all the shots are going in one night, hopefully, and we have a combination of three or four guys that have good games offensively. When you looked at that film, what did you see that the Beavers did defensively uh, against you guys that worked well? You know, I don't necessarily know if it was just one thing. I just, you know, I thought they played with a lot of energy, um, played extremely hard. Um, you know, I can't just pinpoint it on one thing that they did defensively to us. But I just thought they were very solid in what they were trying to do. And again, very well coached team. And Craig did a good job and had them prepared and ready to play.